thing I would like to talk about um, is a little about this uh, fear versus love. Um, I did a bicycling trip from the north of Jutland uh, till India. To India? To India. No wonder you look so bloody fit. <laughs> <laughs> it took me one year and one month. And the main thing I realized uh, during this trip uh, and my seven months of stay down there was that, uh, and you talk about this as well, but, but I realized it from my own experience, and, and this makes a difference, I think, that, that people, I would say up till 95% of the people I know uh, from my history and my life, they act because of fear. Yes. They, act, they are motivated because of, of they lose something or that they don't get something or that the ridicule is another example. Uh, and it goes on. Um, and the question I wrote down here, or, or the thing I wrote down here was, can you explain how the symptoms of our media, politics, education uh, acts out in our daily life with this... Uh, well, you, you, you've hit on uh, the key uh, point, really, in many ways. There is a reason why, through the media, politics and that which controls politics, which people don't see, um, and in all these different institutions, it's why they're always feeding people reasons to fear, reasons to feel insecure, reasons to worry reasons to feel anxiety, to be ill at ease. There are many, many reasons for it, some of them very deep in the rabbit hole. But one of the key reasons is that people who are in fear of something um, overwhelmingly look outside of themselves for something or someone to protect them from what they've been manipulated to fear. What tends to happen when people are in fear is they give their power away. When people are fear of illness, they give their power to the doctor. They're in fear of the law, they give their power to a lawyer. They're in fear of whatever, they'll give their power away to whoever they can protect them. And of course, what any control system run by the relative, well, relatively few, the very few compared with the target population, whenever uh, they, the few want to control the many, they have to do a number of things. Uh, divide and rule the many, set the many at war with each other, but also they have to uh, get the many to give their power to them. Because humans are controlled by a power structure that is powered by you, the energy, the power humans give away all the time. So they give, we give our power away to politicians, we give it to doctors, we give it to scientists, we give it to journalists, the power to tell us what to believe and all this stuff. Um, and uh, fear is also a very dense, low vibrational uh, energetic state. And the more dense you become, it's like when people are in fear and anxiety, they say, oh, God, I feel so heavy today. That's the density of the energy. And that um, disconnects you uh, from a powerful connection to uh, higher uh, vibrational levels of energy where insight and creativity and awareness and intuitive knowing come from. It puts you in a bubble of dense density, dense energy. So when you're a control system um, and you want to control people individually and collectively, then uh, keeping them in fear energetically and in terms of giving their power away to people, the authorities, um, is absolutely essential. So, for instance, when you get people in fear of terrorism, then you give your power away to the authorities to take your basic freedoms away, to protect your freedoms uh, from being taken away. They take your freedoms away. Um, you give your power away to uh, have more and more surveillance, more and more uh, control of your life, uh, more and more of the fine detail of your life being dictated by the state. Um, you give your, your, your power away to, to support uh, wars you say are necessary to fight terrorism, which are actually being carried out by the people fighting the wars. Um, and it, it becomes um, a, a, a cycle of fear, give you power away. Suck fear, give you power away. And in the end, you, the, the person is given so much power away, they're just a robot, just a computer terminal um, on the state's internet, if you like. Um, and, but when you... Um, and another thing is that, you know, I, I emphasise the difference between consciousness and mind. 
Um, they're, they're all the same consciousness, but they're not in the same state of awareness. Um, I symbolize consciousness, that infinite part of us, as an, an, a flowing ocean. And I symbolize mind as like frozen water. They're both water, symbolically, but they're in different states. Mm. One's much denser and less aware and less um, intuitive, less wise than, than the other. And when you are in a state of ocean consciousness, infinite awareness, you don't, you don't deal in states of fear. Because you know there's nothing to fear. You know your infinite awareness and you'll always be infinite awareness. And that's the answer, it's as bad as it gets. But when you get pulled into uh, the mind level, mind body, like the interface level with, between consciousness and this reality, um, then it starts to see things not as wholes, but as things that are apart from everything else. And from, from that sense of everything being apart from everything else come the divisions to divide and rule and, and comes fear and, and, and the need to, to compete and fight with people on different levels. And so to keep people in fear as well as ignorance, the system has to pull people's focus of attention out of consciousness into mind. And what we're living in is a mind-dominated society that basically filters reality almost entirely, certainly consciously, through the five senses, which are a very, very low level of awareness. And, and, and in focusing attention on the five sense level of reality alone, you disconnect um, an awareness and an influence of higher levels of consciousness. Um, and when, when you expand your mind, when you open your mind, when you break open that, 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 that block of ice and, 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 and it starts to flow and let consciousness in, then you go to levels of awareness where fear no longer dominates, no longer impacts itself. So you stop giving your power away. You stop, I, I, I know this is the right thing to do, but I can't, I can't do it because look what might happen, fear. It's like... When you enter those levels we call love, people think um, love is um, weak. Like, oh, you know, he'll be doing the washing up next. He's talking about love now. What's he doing? Um, but what love is, is actually the ultimate power. Because love will always do what it knows to be right, irrespective of the consequences. What, what are my consequences? Do you mean I'm going to think about not doing what I know to be right because of consequences? No, you do what you know to be right. And, and, and this is when you enter these realms where um, you feel to do something, you feel to say something, you, you feel to make a difference in some way, and you just do it and, and, and without fear of the consequences. So now the, the power that fear has to get you to concede your... Uh, uh, sense of reality and your, what you do to, to, to the to state, to the, to the system control, you no longer do that anymore. Love ain't interested in what the system's going to do. It's only interested in what it's right to do. And so um, this is why um, love in its true sense, not, you know, I love you, darling, saw you down the disco and all that stuff, real love um, that says, I do what I know to be right, end of story, there is no other discussion. That's the level that is going to um, transform this world. Um, mind is not going to transform it, where people are sitting around tables saying, well, who's taking the minutes? Okay, so what are we going to decide? How could, no, the mind is never going to uh, bring an end to something that is mind-made. Consciousness is going to do that. And when you move into the realms of consciousness and out of mind, that's when you move out of the realms of fear and division and fault lines engineered to divide and rule us and into both uh, the true sense of love and also the understanding that actually what appears to mind to be loads of things apart from everything else, from this level, everything's one. Everything's just the same consciousness having a different experience called a different name or a different thing. Or